Hey, how y'all doing out there? Back at you again with another video. Today, I'd like to come to you from a biblical perspective. And my subject for today is, there is a cure for the virus. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about the current coronavirus pandemic that's going on in the world. I'm talking about the virus of sin. Now, as we know, of course, there is a horrible pandemic going on in the world right now called coronavirus, which is affecting everyone on the globe, in the globe. And this thing has killed right now, and just in the United States alone, over 20,000 people. And the numbers are constantly growing. And I know a lot of people out there probably believe that this is probably one of the greatest threats to mankind. But actually, it's not. You know, there have been other pandemics. There have been other plagues and things that have gone on through the course of time. The biggest threat to all of humanity is the virus of sin. Because sin affects everybody. Doesn't matter. Like they say in, in Antarctica right now, there's still no cases of this pandemic. But but sin affects everybody everybody in every time somebody is born they are born in sin so sin is a global and not only a global but it's a humanity issue that only jesus christ has the antidote to it he has a permanent cure for the virus of sin let's look at the word virus now i'm not going to get super scientific or super technical i'm just going to keep it down to earth for you, for, for everyone out there. It is simply a disease or illness, the causative agent of an infectious disease. It is something that poisons the mind or soul. Now, sin does all of these things too, because it affects your whole being. It doesn't affect just one part of you. It affects everything, just like a virus when it gets in, it could affect every single part of your body. Now, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on what type of virus it is. Now, we know some type of viruses only attack the respiratory system. Others may affect other areas of your body. But sin affects not only your body, but it affects your soul as well. And your soul is what continues to live on after you leave here. <clears throat> the soul is eternal. The body isn't. The body goes back to the dust, but the soul lives forever. Only question is will the soul will your soul live forever with the Lord Jesus Christ or will your soul be eternally damned in the lake of fire? Let's quickly look at that word sin. Now, it seems like today people take sin. They don't take it serious. They think it's a joke. They think it's no big deal. And I'm talking about even believers really don't take sin as serious as they should. You know, they just think it's just okay to casually sin and they use the excuse, I'm not perfect. But Jesus said, be perfect. Now, if he tells us to be perfect, if he didn't, if he didn't believe that we could do it, why would he tell us to do it? So we can be perfect in him. You know, it, it takes a total commitment to him. Just like you're committed to your job, you're committed to your spouse, you're committed to your children, you're committed to your craft, whatever it is. If you could be committed to that and be disciplined, you could be committed to Jesus Christ and holy living. So let's stop making excuses why we can't live holy on a regular basis because we can. But sin is simply defined as wrongdoing or transgression of God's law. It is a failure to do what is right. Sin also offends people. It is violence and lovelessness towards other people and especially rebellion against God. Sin involves a condition in which the heart is corrupted and inclined towards evil. That is the definition of sin. And unfortunately, we are all affected or has been affected by sin. Even nature has been affected by sin. Let's get into the word. Romans 5 and 12 reads, and I only read from the King James Version if you'd like to follow along. 
Romans chapter 5 verse 12 reads, For wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for in that all have sinned. What man are you referring to? I'm referring to Adam. Adam was the first human being God created. And he put him in charge and commanded him to, to not to um, eat from the uh, forbidden fruit, from the tree, from the, um, <clears throat> you know, from the, the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. And of course, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, of course, you know, him and Eve did so. But God commanded him. He, 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 I mean, they were both held accountable, but God um, put it on him because it says here, one man, it didn't say Eve. It said one man, okay? Because of him, sin entered into the world. And we know the result of sin always brings about death. So when we were born, we already had have have a death sent sentence on us when we're born right from the right from the beginning right from the time we come out of our mother's wombs we are already condemned we're already condemned to death because sin has passed from adam to all of us and he is all of our fathers he was the first human being and what he did passed to all of us the bible makes it very clear for all have sin. So I don't care how good you think you are. I don't care how many times you did good things. You are still a sinner unless you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, repented of your sins and are now living a holy life. You are a sinner and you are destined for the lake of fire. Romans chapter three, verse 23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all come short. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter how long you've been in church. It does not matter. We have all sinned. We were all at one time sinners. Now, not all of us are sinners now. There, there are actually many that are out there living holy and righteous lives before the, before the Lord. But there are many that are not doing so. Probably more, more so that are not living holy and righteous lives. That's clear just by how society is. That's clear most people are not living holy <clears throat> and unfortunately there are many that are sitting up in churches every single week for years upon years upon years and they're not even living holy and clean lives before the lord and are destined to the lake of fire and it's unfortunate that these preachers are preaching this once save always save no matter how you live it is absolutely not true if you're living holy, yes, you, you remain saved and your salvation is sure. But if you start practicing sin and you start going back out there and sinning on a regular basis against the Lord God, you are a sinner and your salvation has been, um, you have basically, um, <clears throat> you basically given up your own salvation. You basically just said, Lord, I don't, you know, I don't really need your salvation. Because you can't live in sin and still be saved. You cannot do it. You can't do both. Just like he told the church in the book of Revelations, the church of Laodicea, that you're neither cold nor hot. And because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. You can't be a sinner and be saved. You can't be both. It's either one or the other. The book of Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 reads, But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities, meaning wickedness, like the wind have taken us away. Think about that. We are all like the unclean thing and our righteousness are as filthy rags. Our righteousness don't mean nothing unless we are saved. So if you are the type of person that have never repented, never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you think just because you've been a quote-unquote good person and you've never hurt anybody and you've only done good for people, that don't mean anything. You can still be lost, and you are clearly still lost. 
because our righteousness ain't good enough. Our righteousness before the Lord is as filthy rags. So please understand, it doesn't matter how good you think you are in your own eyes. God looks at the heart and if you and if you and if you have not repented of your sins and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and are living a holy and clean life before him, you are destined for hell and the lake of fire. Sorry if that's to the point and it sounds rough, but it is what it is. And God's word says the same thing that I'm telling you. OK, it says the same exact thing. I have to warn you. If I don't warn you, God will hold me accountable. Book of Psalms, Psalms 14, 1 through 3. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, that's pretty much self-explanatory. Let's look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. These are the things that come out of the heart of man. These are the things that are in the heart of man that has not been washed by the blood of the lamb, which is Jesus Christ. If your heart has not been washed by the blood of the lamb, these are the things that's in your heart. Whether you act on them or not, they're in your heart. Jesus said just to look upon a woman to want to be with her is, is, is basically adultery because, because it's in your heart. See, the things that come out of the heart is what corrupt the man. Okay. Let's look at Romans chapter five, verses six through 11. Now, this is what I love about Jesus. Listen, listen to what he he did for us. Look, how, l listen to how much he loves us. It says, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for who? For the ungodly. So that means if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, he died for you. He gave up his life for you so you could have eternal life with him. Don't throw this wonderful gift away. It's the greatest gift that you can ever be given because you didn't have to do anything to receive it. It was given to you. God himself left his abode to become a human being to die in our place. I don't think we truly understand the ramifications and to what degree he went through just to redeem us back to himself. Let me read on. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Okay? Just one. <laughs> All right? Yet peradventure, meaning perhaps, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Meaning he brought his love together towards us and that what and that while we were yet sinners Christ still died for us. Let me read the next verse. Much more than being now justified, meaning made righteous by his blood. We are made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. We shall be saved from wrath, meaning his anger and indignation, because the wrath of God is going to come and fall on the ungodly. Through him. So I'm going to read it again. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So through Jesus Christ and him alone, will we be able to escape the wrath of God that's going to fall on the ungodly? And how we escape that? Through Jesus Christ, through accepting 
him as our Lord and personal Savior and living holy. That's the only way we're going to escape the wrath of God. Next verse, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled, meaning restored to God by, by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So by him giving up his life, he saved our lives. And that's only for those that have accepted him. Only for those that have repented. Okay. We are saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, meaning the favor of God. Now, how many of you out there want the favor of God to rest on you? I know I want his favor to rest on me all the time. Okay. But we can only have the favor of God through Jesus Christ, through accept, accepting him as our Lord and personal savior. Let's look at a very familiar passage of scripture that has been read, probably have heard it maybe 10,000 times over my lifetime, but it is so, it is so powerful for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, meaning doesn't matter who you are, whosoever believeth in him, that meaning Trust in him, okay? Having your confidence in him, accepting what he did for you on Calvary's cross should not perish. You will not perish, meaning you won't die a physical death and then you have to deal with an eternal death. But it says, but have everlasting life. So there's only two choices out there, everlasting death and everlasting life. There is no in-between. Either you're going to experience eternal death or you're going to experience eternal life through Jesus Christ. If you reject Jesus' gift of salvation, you will experience an eternal death. When you die, you're just not going to evaporate and, and, and you're going to, you know, you're going to cease to exist. No, no. If anybody told you that, they're lying to you. There is a hell and there is a heaven. You're either going to go the one or the other. The only way you're going to be with Jesus Christ is to be saved. Next verse. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come and die for our sins to condemn us. But it says, but that the world through him might be saved. He wants to save each and every one of us. He wants us to be safe. He wants to rescue us. Please listen to what I'm saying. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 13. That if, shalt, that if thou shalt confess, meaning to declare, to admit, to speak openly or to celebrate with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is how you get that cure for the virus of sin. This is how you get it. That if, Let me read it again. That if thou shalt confess, meaning to declare, to admit, to speak openly, and to celebrate with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Being saved means to keep safe, to rescue from danger or destruction, to preserve, to heal and restore, and also to make well. So it, it just it's funny to me how some of these big entertainers or whoever they are want to make proclaims to be Christians, but yet they don't openly come out and say they're actually saved and witness for Jesus Christ. And Jesus made it very clear the tree is known by its fruit. So if there's no fruit of righteousness that they show, then they're clearly not saved. They're just talking. They're just religious. And unfortunately, there's a whole lot of religious people but there's, there's not a whole lot of people that have a relationship with Jesus Christ, meaning they're not saved. They're just putting on a show. They're just, they're just being hypocrites. They're just going through the motions, but they have no relationship with God because light and dark can't exist in a Christian. 
You either in the light or you're in the darkness. You can't be in both. Okay? You just can't. Next verse. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you're going to have to speak this thing. You're going to have to believe it and say it. You don't have to. You're not going to be ashamed. You're not going to not want nobody to know that you're saved. You're going to shout it out to the rooftop. I'm saved. I love Jesus Christ. You know, one thing I can say about me and people on my job that know me, they know who I am and they know who I represent because I don't make no bones about it. I'm not ashamed of it at all. I serve the true and living God. Now, whether they choose to believe that, that's up to them. But I know who I serve. I know in whom I believe. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. It doesn't have to be a secret. It doesn't have to be something you're trying to cover up. If you are naming the name of the Lord, there's no reason for you to be ashamed. None of us. All right. Next verse, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, meaning Gentile. See, anybody that's a Jew is a Gentile. Greek was just another word for Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Think about that. He's rich upon all those that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is that that's that's the cure. I'm telling you now. Think about this before I read my last verse. There are many that have recovered from this virus. So the virus has not killed everybody that has gotten it. See, even in the midst of such devastation and such death, God is still showing mercy. He's still sparing many. He's sparing many more people that are dying. There are more people being spared of death than the ones that are dying. And I know a lot of times you may think that's not true, but see, the media is not putting out there how many people are actually recovering all the time. At least they don't do it enough. They do it sparingly. It's just they always got the number posted up there, how many cases and how many deaths, but they don't, they should put the number up there also, how many people have recovered. So even in the worst case scenario, and I've never seen nothing like this in my whole lifetime. But God is still showing mercy because the unbelievers are crying out for mercy and the believers are crying out for mercy. And I'm one of them. I'm crying out for mercy for believers and unbelievers because we all need the mercy of God. The Bible says his mercies are renewed every day. And God has been more than patient with mankind. It's been well over 2000 years since Jesus died and went and, and, and went back to heaven. And it's only a matter of time before he returns again. And yet man has still turned his back on him. Man still, still refuses to repent. Man just delves further and further into sin and to wickedness and to lawlessness. Do y'all honestly think our society is getting better? No, it's getting gradually worse. And it's going to continue to get worse until Jesus returns. Then he's going to put everything. He's going to set everything straight. He will deal with the sin issue once and for all. Now, if y'all think that this pandemic is bad, and I'm not saying it's not a bad thing, but for those of you that really know the Lord and you've read the book of Revelations, this is nothing compared to what's going to befall the ungodly. This, 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 is, this don't even compare. This is nothing. I mean, reading that stuff just scares me to death. You know what it does? It scares the hell out of me. Like this just scared me to the point where I'm determined and more dedicated than ever before to live holy and righteous before the Lord. Because I don't want to have nothing to do with the wrath of God. No, nothing to do with that. But all those that refuse to repent, all those that refuse to accept his love gift of salvation and refuse to live holy. You will suffer the wrath of God. Let me read this one last and final verse. The book of Acts chapter four, verses 12 reads, there is neither, excuse me, neither is there salvation in any other. 
Listen to me closely for this final verse here. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none, meaning no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So if you're going to, if you want to be saved, Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved. The only way to receive salvation and the forgiveness of sin. It is him and him alone. You cannot do it any other way. And to think that you could skip over Jesus to, to, to get to the father, it's not going to happen. Okay, you have to go through Jesus Christ to even get to the father. So you can't skip over him. You can't view Jesus just some prophet and that's all he was. No, he is the son of God and he's God almighty. So there is no other name under heaven. Okay, whereby we must be saved. There is no other way to be saved other than Jesus Christ. Now, I just gave you the cure for the virus. There is a cure for the virus of sin. And I know right now mankind is working furiously to figure out to get a vaccine for this cure for this uh, virus. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. But I'm not depending on a man-made cure for even this. I'm depending on God's love, grace, mercy, and his protection. So I'm not living in fear and panic and like so many others are. For those of you out there that are believers, Jesus made it very clear. I say Paul made it very clear that we shouldn't be living by the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We should not be living in fear, no matter what it looks like, no matter how it, how you feel. We can't, we should not live in fear because fear is of the devil. Fear is not of God. God is a God of love. So if this is a time that we need to trust him. This is the time we need to trust him like never before. A lot of people are actually, you know, you may feel like you're being tested. You may feel like you're being tried. I don't know. Only the person that knows what they're doing is God and him alone. Only he knows what he's doing and why he's doing it. But don't pass your tests. Endure. Be encouraged. Strengthen yourself. Draw closer to him. Talk to him more. Read his word more. Spend more time with him. Praise him more. Worship him more. Tell him how much you love him, how much you appreciate him. Even if he decides to take you out of here by this, at least you'll be with him. You won't be experiencing eternal death. But if he spares you, that's him showing his love even more towards you. So, I'm, I'm done. There is a cure for the virus, and I'm talking about the virus of sin. I want you all to know that I am praying for each and every one of you, and I really am, because this is not just affecting certain types of people. It's affecting everybody, and I don't want any more deaths. I really don't, because I know that a lot of people out there that are hurting, that a lot of people out there that are looking for answers, there is an answer. The answer is Jesus Christ. Look to him if you want answers. I hope something I said has encouraged you to keep fighting the good fight of faith. And may God bless you is my prayer.